I like messing around with computers, like fixing them and working on them, just doing whatever with them. Like, uh, a lot of times, if there, every once in a while, there is a free computer on Craigslist, working or not working, I like to get it. Uh, I can at least take it apart and get salvage some stuff from it. And one thing I like to do is take out um, old broken cards um, or RAM pieces from them, and I like to cut off the gold little gold bits and. I have a method for removing the gold bits, and just the gold bits, um, as a method of recycling them. And basically, this is a nice collection of all the gold powder I've collected from this. That's all, believe it or not, that's gold. Because um, they really use real gold on electrical components like this, because it is a very, very good conductor of electricity. Um, and yeah, that's all from computer cards. Um, basically, if you look on eBay looking for uh, scrap gold and stuff from computers, a lot of times what people will do is just take a blowtorch to computer processors and stuff and melt it down like that. And that's not very good because that's not pure gold. There's a... Uh, because the pins aren't gold themselves. What they are are copper spikes that are gold-plated. So when they melt that down, they go melt everything down. So you get a glob of this uh, copper-gold alloy. And uh, my method, you get pure gold because you dissolve the copper out. So basically, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the gold fingers off of these cards and RAM and I'm gonna put them in this jar with a mixture of muriatic acid which is hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. It's really easy to use uh, tin snips or some kind of wire cutter or pliers to um, cut off the, the gold fingers like that. This won't be a very big batch um, but after you cut the gold fingers and just various other gold bits off, um, you're going to want to take your muriatic acid and fill a glass container with it. I don't have that many, so I'm not going to use too much of it, just enough to cover all the, all the stuff. Alright, and now you're going to want to... Uh, take your hydrogen peroxide and pour it in. Ideally, ideally with um, I think this is um, I think this is three percent hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, three percent hydrogen peroxide. You're gonna want a uh, two to one ratio. Um, you're gonna see all the swirling happening down here. It's pretty cool. But the reaction is going to start taking place, and then you're going to put your gold bits in. Be careful with the acid because um, it is pretty strong, and whatever you get it on is going to turn ugly yellow colors and stuff. So basically, what's going to happen is the copper underneath the gold, it's just gold plated copper, but the copper bits are going to dissolve into the acid, which is going to turn this entire thing blue, um, and the gold foils will just lift off and actually float to the surface. Check that out. You can see um, the, the liquid starting to turn a greenish yellow color, just agitate it every once in a while and uh, mix it up. Actually, a good way to tell that it's working is you'll see these bubbles forming on the surfaces. That's a good sign to, to um, so that you know that it's working. Um, and actually, already you can see on the surface little flakes of gold floating to the surface. It's working. You can see that more of the uh, gold films have floated to the top and separated from the circuit boards, but if you look closely, you can see that not many bubbles are left over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more hydrogen peroxide and that'll just sort of kickstart the reaction again. 
this uh, you can use the same fluid over and over again for quite a while. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to mix it up. This screwdriver used to be nice and shiny chrome, but you can see what the acid has done to it. Um, so just another warning. All right, now that most of the foils, if not all of them, are off of the, the printed circuit boards and floating in the green solution that we have here, uh, we're gonna filter the solution through some coffee filters in this funnel. All right, now I have the filter in the funnel in the cup and we're gonna pour the solution into it. It does take a little bit of time to drain down into it and we're probably going to have to use more than one filter um, because it's going to get saturated. As you go along you're going to want to mix it up. Make sure the pieces of gold all are in the fluid and not resting on the bottom. So here's the first filter I went through. I'm going to spread it out on this um, this towel to dry out. I What I did to get all of the gold powder at the bottom is I rinsed around the edges with water um, so that it all flowed down to the middle. And, and that's what you're left with. Um, you can see there's a couple green pieces of the PCB board there, but that's all gold besides this uh, speck of black. That's also part of the PCB. I've never had a chunk come off that big. But um, this stuff sticks to everything, so just wipe it off. Yeah, there. And that's the gold. I'm going to let it sit out and dry, and then we can just brush it off. And there's the second filter full of gold. So now all that's left to do is let these dry out and brush them off. Got all of this from just a few pieces of uh, a few computer cards and a couple pieces of RAM. Once you collect the powder like this, you can pick out any of the big uh, pieces of the circuit board and then melt it down with some borax as flux and what will happen is all of the other um, imperfections in it will rise to the surface while it melts and you'll end up with a lump of gold at the bottom.